What's up? My name is Casey Budge. This is the Off Season Podcast, and today it's just me, just a little bit of chit chatting. Uh, I've got some new music for you guys to check out. I've got some rodeo talk I want to talk about. I want to talk about some uh, news that's a little bit old news by this point about the rodeo world, but I want to discuss it and say what it means for the future implications of rodeo and that sort of thing. So let's just dive on in. So there's a lot of new music has come out in the last couple of weeks. Uh, notably, and I think my favorite, is the Noah Khan album Live from Fenway. Notably, Pain is Cold Water. It's a brand new song. Um, it's phenomenal. If you haven't l- listened to it, it kind of blew up on TikTok uh, because of videos of the live performance of it. And it's really, really good. It's an incredible song. Uh, some people were a little bit mad about the fact that some other songs like The Great Divide and uh, If We Were Vampires Live with the Lumineers wasn't on this album. And honestly, I'm just happy that we got the live versions of these songs. I think that it's really cool that we got to experience this, especially those of us who didn't get to be there in person or didn't get to experience him live at all yet which i'm really wanting to go see him live but i don't have a bajillion dollars to spend so hey noah if you want me to come come out to a show just let me know you know but anyway um that was a really fun live album that we've gotten we also got american son from kobe acuff uh one of my former interviewees as well and this is an amazing album from top to bottom uh, there are so many classic Kobe Acuff songs on here. There's some political commentary. There's some commentary about mental health. There's some commentary about lots of different things. There are just some good story songs in there, too. And uh, I think that this is another one of those albums from Kobe that isn't what people are used to from him necessarily, but it's more about where he is right now as a writer and not about what he has been. And so I know that from his interview, it's really important for him to write about what he is experiencing and his truth. And so this kind of shows a lot about where he's at and what he has going on. As well, we got a new single from Casey Donahue, Green in Colorado classic Casey Donahue sad song and there's a new Casey Donahue album coming out in a couple months I feel like I feel like it's coming out in November the Wilder Blue also put out a new single called Pass It On Down and that's really good and then probably my favorite of the new albums uh, Rhinestone by Maggie Antone and I do I do not know if that's how you correctly pronounce her last name so hopefully that's correct but this album is one of the best albums that I've listened to this whole year. Oops, got a little little musical intro of it there. <laughs> um, and that that was the intro to One Too Many, which is one of the best songs on the album. But like this album is excellent from top to bottom. First song is called Johnny Moonshine, and it's about this guy who has all these bad habits and is not necessarily good for our narrator, but uh, she loves him and that's awesome one too many is a kind of a party album or a anthem it's about uh all the different nights when she's had too, one too many and all of the fun uh like drinks and stuff that go along with that and uh she talks about how um johnny johnny knocked her out or jack knocked her out and johnny walked her home mary jane showed up and got her stoned and that's just such a fun line. Like, that's that's such a cool little piece of songwriting. Uh, Everyone But You is about that weird spot in a relationship where, like, you've told all your friends that you love this person. You've told everyone that you have a crush on this person, but you haven't told them. And so it's that space in between there where you're trying to get the courage or you're trying to get the guts to tell them. And you don't want to lose them as a friend, but you also care about them more than just a friend so it's it's a tough situation there uh mess with texas is about 
um, the narrator being in love with someone who is from Texas, and there's the, the old saying, don't mess with Texas, but uh, the narrator has um, turned it into, well, I'm, I'm going to mess with Texas. That's, that's something that I'm going to do. The next song is called High Standards, and it's about uh, her standards being too low when she gets high because she goes and smokes weed with this guy who isn't necessarily the best uh, person, but he has weed and she was bored, so that's, that's, that's what she does. Um, Suburban, Cow- or Suburban Outlaw is a song about this just guy who is no good it's it's just a song about a guy who's not the best um character he's not the best in anything i don't want to hear about it is probably my second favorite song on this album it's just speaks to a really interesting place in a relationship it's kind of like that uh saying like i hope you eat just not at my table like and and talks about how i hope you're super successful i hope you get everything you want i just don't want to hear about it me and jose cuervo is the next song and it is about uh this girl sitting alone on the cinco de mayo and uh and like wearing a cab or wearing a like souvenir sombrero and drinking uh, Jose Cuervo and eventually the Jose Cuervo runs out on her so she's just sitting there alone and it, it kind of plays with fun wordplay there about how uh, like Jose being a real person and uh, they both miss the ex-boyfriend or the situation ship or whatever that relationship was with the um, with the person who she's talking to. Rhinestone is just a song about her like it's it's just top to bottom it's just the it is the name of the album for a reason it's ju- it's, it's just an anthem about her and kind of some of her stuff that she's been through and uh her journey as a musician and yeah uh, there's another song meant to be and it's another kind of love song that i really enjoy like uh, there's not a bad song on that album uh beer for breakfast is another good song that came out this week and that is a zach zach top song uh, phenomenal phenomenal song <laughs> i don't know if uh any of you guys saw that but there was a video that zach top kind of put around about how he wrote this song about beer for breakfast but he didn't really know if he had ever tried it so <laughs> he uh he put um beer in his uh cheerios and my girlfriend was talking about how she <laughs> she just called that beerios back in the day brought me back to my college days for sure uh Wyatt Flores uh has a new album coming out called Welcome to the Plains that will be available I don't know when it doesn't say when uh but he put out a new song off of that album that is Don't Want to Say Goodnight and it's really good and that is all the new music that I want to talk about right now I do have a little bit of a recommend for you guys as far as some music and some artists who I want you guys to keep an eye on. So there's this band called the Davis Brothers Band, and I first got turned on to them because someone who I, like, randomly go about, like, I'll repost a cool music video on TikTok, and then they'll repost one, like, we'll, we'll kind of, like, see each other's music videos, and I don't know if they have noticed this yet or not, but, like, it, it, it seems like, like, one of us or the other is always coming to one of these music video first, and whenever I see something that they've reposted, I know that it's, like, classic, like, um, amazing country music, and I hope that they think the same thing about me. <laughs> Follow me on TikTok, at Casey Bud if you want this fresh, topical uh, reposts and some hilarious, hilarious stuff about me because I post some really funny videos on there. Um, but anyway, uh, the Davis Brothers Band is this really fun little folk band, um, and they have done covers of Long Hot Summer Day, In My Arms Instead, and they also have some original music as well. Um, and I highly recommend that you guys go check them out. I know that they're on Apple Music because that's what I have. I don't know if they're on Spotify or not, but they are really, really good. And I highly recommend that you guys go and check them out. Their fiddle player especially is incredibly talented. And that is what I have to say about that.
Now, moving on to the rodeo news that I kind of wanted to talk about for a little bit. So, growing up rodeoing, I've kind of had this like weird connection to a lot of people in country music, I mean, in the rodeo world, and it's it's been cool. It's been cool to get to know some of these people who end up at the NFR or uh, people who I grew up rodeoing going to the NFR has been crazy. Like uh, Tanner Butner last year was a great example. I've known him since I started rodeoing. Like he grew up an hour and a half away from where I grew up and we rodeoed in the same district. We hung out together. I went to his wedding, like um, just, just so much like history there and I I think it's really cool that the rodeo world is that small because I now know a bunch of people I high school rodeoed with Cooper Cook who is sitting sixth in the bareback riding right now um I college rodeoed with Cade Bruno who is sitting second in the saddle bronc riding uh Zeke Thurston also went to the same college that I went to but he was there a little while before me uh, Brody Cress and Sage Newman, I also both kind of knew both of them, um, as well as Cole Reiner. Cole Reiner, uh, was kind of always around, uh, the college that I went to. He won a national championship there, um, and he is an amazing young man. And, yeah, that's, that's kind of the, just the thought, thoughts that I had on that. Uh, the other fun thing that I wanted to mention is that Shad Mayfield is winning the all-around right now, which I think is hilarious. Um, Shad obviously has come in every year with a huge, huge lead in the cap roping, which this year he's only ahead by 18,000, which he's ahead by 18,000, but that can be made up pretty quickly at the NFR. But he's he's always come in to the NFR with this huge lead, and he's he's almost blown it a couple of years. Uh, I think he's come away with the win the past couple of years. But especially at the Thomas and Mac, he's really struggled to rope when he's there. He's not been very consistent and stuff. Uh, but I think it's funny that he's winning the all around this year because I kind of <laughs> I've kind of done some or like made some jokes at his expense especially when the nfr is going on about how like he's inconsistent at the nfr and so it's cool to see him having success i did not ever rodeo with him but i was at the high school finals the same year as him and i saw him rope a bunch um but i don't really know him and so that kind of leads into it doesn't really lead into but super smooth transition into the next thing that i want to talk about and that is how the nfr got paid roughly over the next 12 years the nfr is going to get paid roughly 264.3 million dollars at the end of the deal to stay in Las Vegas for the next 12 years. And what that means for this next year, the 2024 contestants uh, prize money will be $12,501,505. And the stock crime churchers will receive almost $4 million. Uh, And so that money also includes $1.2 million for the NFL for the NFR qualifiers, so that's 1.2 in guaranteed money for them. Uh, and I think part of that goes because they still have to pay entry fees to the NFR, but then they basically write them all a check that pays for all their entry fees and stuff. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that someone has explained that to me. But the thing about this is that I find really interesting is if the NFR does not put breakaway roping into the into the performance this year i'm probably going to throw a fit about it because it is ridiculous that you're getting paid an extra 200 million dollars 260 million dollars and you're not going to have time to put one of the fastest growing events that has that will surely generate you guys more money and more 
viewership by young women and uh, give you more exposure to young women and help grow the industry. No, 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 no. We can't do that because we need more time singing a random song, some random artist singing a random song at the beginning of the performance. That's that's more important. I just I just think that's crazy. Like the NFR needs to put breakaway roping in the performance stat. That is non-negotiable and I think that they have the money to do it. They have the ability to do it. They just need to do it. Like it's not it's not really an option. Like if if they don't put it in, that is just going to show that they don't care. It's not about money. Like they they got paid. They, they got the extra money that they need. Go ahead and put breakaway roping in. At that point, you're just showing that you're sexist and not a very nice person. And I that's not what rodeo is about. Rodeo is about being all inclusive. I mean, it's it's legitimately one of the most fair sports out there that anyone can come and compete in it if you have the resources to do it. Anyone can do it. You can it's it's timed. Like lots of the events are timed. So, it doesn't matter if you're good or if you're flashy or whatever. It just matters that you do it in the right amount of time. Like it's it's kind of silly. It's it's a little it's a little silly. I think that Breakaway has the potential to seriously grow the industry. I've said this for years. Um, it, it'll boost the price of calf horses. It'll help girls get into rodeo more. You could potentially start seeing girls go down the road team roping because they can afford to go in more than just one event. Like they can, uh, girls can have the potential to win the breakaway roping and maybe win the all around if they excuse me, if they win a bunch of money in the breakaway and then they win in some other event, they could potentially have the potential to win the all-around, which would be cool. It would be so cool to see that. That would be an incredible thing for the <laughs> the girls to be able to do. And not only that, I think that college rodeo and the NFR needs to bring pole bending into it. Because wouldn't that be so cool? Wouldn't it be so freaking awesome to see a professional pole bender like running a crazy fast run or professional goat tying too like that would be so cool i have a fr- i have a friend who i grew up uh like i've junior high rodeoed with her and she just won the college finals and i wish in my heart of hearts that she could go and professional ro- like go and pro rodeo and go and tie goats at the professional level because that would be so cool to watch like you cannot tell me that you're a true fan of rodeo if you don't want to see girls getting to tie goats at the highest level like if you've seen girls in college rodeo tie goats you know what i'm talking about they're fast they're hurtling down the arena and they'll just step off and and they're so fast and they're so meticulous about it that they can do it at these crazy high speeds and that's they make it look easy man they make it look so easy and it is really hard trust me i i know i've done i've done it and it's not that easy and they're just incredibly talented and incredibly cool and people who don't want to see that are lame and they don't like rodeo and that might just be my opinion but also it's true you if you don't want to see breakaway roping and pole bending and goat tying in the professional rodeo association then you're not a real rodeo fan and i don't like you and you probably stink and that's what I think about that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not going to alienate any of my audience at all. Um, <laughs> I just, I, I feel very passionately about this, that it's not going to hurt you. Like, it's, it's not going to take away from the events that you already have. It's only going to grow the sport. Like, it's not going to make it so that it's watered down like it's going to be more fun more people are going to like it more people are going to come and watch and it's going to give more opportunities to more people to get to rodeo and rodeo is the coolest and the best sport in the world and i will not hear otherwise 
rodeo is the only sport that still prays at the beginning, and that's incredible. Rodeo is, like, hands down, the best sport in the world. We still say the national anthem, or we still sing the national anthem. We still respect our veterans. We still do all this stuff, and yet we can't include breakaway roping in the... <laughs> like, we can't include breakaway roping in the performance? That's just silly. That's so dumb. I do not like it. It it's a bad look for rodeo. It really is. Like it's not a good way to beat because we have this reputation of being a step above. We we're not the like professional rodeo athletes are not abusing their wives. They're not out here getting into car wreck car wrecks. They're not doing all these things. They are a, a cut above. They love God, they love Jesus, and they're just, like, in general, and obviously there are exceptions, but, like, compared to, like, people in the NF, uh, in the NFL and in the NBA, people in the NFR are, are, or people who go to the NFR are better moral people than people who play other sports or who are professionals in other sports, and so to not do this seemingly moral good when you have the money, when you have the time. It's not like the performances are too long or anything like that. It's a, it's a couple hours. Like, just add an hour at the beginning, and it's it'll be fine. I promise. People will watch it. Like, people people will still watch it, and they will love it. And it's, it's not like it has to be this huge thing just put it in and I, I, i'm partly joking about the uh, uh polls and the go time because that would be a little silly but also i kind of want it i kind of want to see that i think that would be so cool i think that would be so much fun to have like pole bending and uh go tying in the in the professional rodeo association where it should be because they are professional rodeo athletes, and they're good enough. It's not like there aren't talented women out there who are good enough to do it. There are. Like, I, I, I know them. I know a lot of them. I could rattle off 100 names right now, and I just want to see it. Like, I, I want it in my lifetime to where there are just as many sports for women in the Professional Rodeo Association as there are for men, and I want to see a woman win the all around like that would be so cool you know how cool that would be you know how many young women and girls would dream of going to the nfr and professional rodeoing if that was the chase it would be crazy i mean you've already got like sarah dawson kicking booty a couple months after she gave birth in the cow horse and stuff like the cow like the performance host industry knows what's up Let's get on board, PRCA. Get your stuff together, and I can't wait for December to come around and to put you on blast for getting paid $263 million and not including Breakaway in the performance. Super excited for that. Uh, thanks for listening to my rant. Um, oh, that, was, that, that, was a, that was a lot of a rant, but I feel like... I feel like it was some good things that needed to be said and I'll, I'll be happy to come back to put the PRCA on blast for this at the end of the year. So, uh, thank you for listening. Um, I know that this wasn't all our fun, happy music talk, but I'm glad that I talked about this. I think that it was something that needed to be said that should have been said and that I don't know if I've said in the past, but I'm glad that I've said it now. If you want to find us on social media, you can find us pretty much on anything, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Threads, YouTube, all at Western, or at the Offseason Podcast. Sorry, I'm, I'm so used to saying at Western Sounds that it's, it's just ingrained into me, and I'm still getting better at this new podcast. But yeah, thank you for listening. This has been the off-season podcast. Please give us a rating or review on whatever podcast player you're on. Please follow us. And 
I'll see you next week. And it probably won't be just me next week. I will probably have a guest, a fun guest. So we will see. But thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you in a week. Bye-bye.